The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what to you you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. During this uh, Christmas season, what is uh, impressed upon us, at least that's what uh, uh, catches my attention, is the constant desire of God to dwell with his people. With uh, Moses was uh, a tent, and then David wanted to build a temple, and Nathan, the, the prophet, was told by God, tell David that he will not, but his son will, Solomon, and then throughout the centuries, the temple was uh, destroyed and rebuilt. And eventually, Jesus he is the one who becomes that presence. And we represent it in the, in the crib. As you know, this year is uh, 800 years since uh, St. Francis opened this uh, tradition of representing the crib, the nativity scene. He had been in the Holy Land. He was going back from Rome to Assisi on the way, walking about halfway in this little town, Greccio. It was a Christmas Eve, and he wanted to have this representation of uh, a child, newly born, and an ox and a donkey, and ask the people to come with their candles and uh, contemplate the great mystery of God among us. But we can see now how that presence is in each person. And so for Steve was to accept that message. And each one of us is that presence. And we nourish that presence in uh, five different ways. That's what I am able to summarize and to make it clear for me. One is inside, like in the palm, which is the life of grace, the life within us. And then there is the scripture, there is the community, there is the Eucharist, there is the neighbor, there is the authority of the church. The five ways in which we nourish this presence. And we see how powerful this presence is for many who are willing to give, lay down their lives because of that presence of God, because of that faith. And so it's a reminder, this feast of uh, St. Stephen, for us to nourish of all these sources, like in a husband and wife or young people who love each other, there are different ways of manifesting their loves. It can be a kiss, it can be a hug, it can be a meal, it can be a flower, it can be a walk in the park or watching a movie. The same does God. He has different ways. His words are spoken to us. His presence is in each one of us, and ask us to serve each other. Especially at Christmas, there is so much attention, generosity for the poor, for the needy, for the hungry. And we come together as a community to strengthen our faith, and we ask the Lord to lead the church throughout the centuries. Like Stephen, there are moments in different parts of the world where the church is tested and made to suffer at the same time we realize that the church is not perfect either, and there are shortcomings. So in the midst of uh, this constant struggle 
to bring about the presence of God is the challenge also for us. In our families, many lament that their children don't go to Mass anymore. I jokingly say, if it were all to come, this church would not be enough because there would be so many. But uh, the reality is, you know, the faith is not a given. It's a, an openness of the heart, the, the mind, but the more the desire to realize that God who created us, he gives us his son, and he asks us to live in the ways that he taught us and showed us. We pray that we continue in that journey of faith and perseverance and witnessing the presence of God in our lives.